Hi, I'm Dr. Henry Black. I'm a clinical professor of internal medicine at the New York University School of Medicine and a member of the Center for Cardiovascular Disease Prevention at our institution. I'm also president of the American Society of Hypertension. What I want to talk to about today is a side effect of antihypertensive agents, namely angioedema, which we see with ACE inhibitors. This is about the only side effect that I'm aware of that uh, could be fatal on the first pill. Now, that's not a comfortable thing when we have so many options for um, antihypertensive treatment and also for heart failure treatment where this agent is being used, not to mention renal protection, many, many uses of this very important class of drugs, drugs we've had available to us since the 1980s. Now, angioedema was recognized as a, a side effect of of this particular class of drugs pretty early on, thought to be due in some ways to bradykinin uh, stimulation, but that's not been exactly clear. What isn't clear is how often this happens, who it happens to, and whether we can predict what happens, who gets it, and what happens after that. Well, there have been several looks at this, uh, some to look at uh, adverse events reported to, to the Food and Drug Administration, but this tends to be under-reporting since sometimes the cases aren't recognized and sometimes uh, the doctors who see patients who, who have angioedema don't go through the trouble that it takes to send this in to the agency, even though they're supposed to. Now, we've looked at this in a couple of different ways. One has been in a prospective trial called Octave, which is looking at a drug called Omipatrolat, where angioedema was of concern. In Octave, about, there was about a 7% incidence or about 7 per thousand, a 0.7 percent incidence of um, new angioedema, um, four or five times more common in the omipatrolet arm relative to enalapro, which was the comparator. So one of the ways to get at this is to use carefully constructed databases and to try to look at the cases and to try to confirm that they really are angioedema because mild cases are often missed. Well, to do this, the Veterans Administration looked at everybody who had gotten a new antihypertensive prescription over about two years. This was about 1.7 million individuals in the VA system, half of whom uh, who got antihypertensive prescriptions got them with ACE inhibitors, somewhat less with other drugs. What they then did is wait about six months to see that it was new, a new prescription and then followed them up over the next year, year and a half to see how many new cases developed. The uh, number of patients who developed angioedema was about 0.2% or about 2 per thousand, which uh, is pretty similar to the incidence that we had expected. 71% of the uh, cases of angioedema that were reported in this VA database were attributable to getting ACE inhibitors, and about 58% of all of the antihypertensive prescriptions were attributable to ACE inhibitors. This was then compared to other drugs, and as you might expect, in the VA system, there was wide use of diuretics, wide use of beta blockers, modest use of angiotensin receptor blockers, although over 61,000 veterans had received angiotensin receptor blockers, plus all of the other agents that, that were seen. What was concluded uh, from the serious and often occasionally, I should say, fatal cases was that uh, ACE inhibitors seemed to be the proximate cause in a large number of those individuals. They've uh, estimated that about one of 2,600 patients who received an ACE inhibitor would develop angioedema uh, in the first 90 days, and about one in 1,000 at any time during their treatment, because you may develop angioedema later on. They also did chart reviews to validate as best they could that this was true angioedema, not just misreported, and they also were quite clear that they might have missed some cases because this could be a subtle diagnosis or that it may even be overcalled as they went along. They found out that as we did in Octave and in some of the other databases, that blacks were much more common, about four times more common than were whites to get angioedema, that patients who had coronary disease or heart failure were also more likely to have it, and that diabetics were less likely to get angioedema. Perhaps uh, the system that leads to it is already revved up, and so you don't see it as often. Now, uh, 
they compared this to the development of angioedema with all the other classes of drugs, including angiotensin receptor blockers, and there was a clear, clearly this was due to the drug. The ARB number was felt to be a little bit too small to be sure that this wasn't also a consequence of angiotensin receptor blocker therapy. So I think right now we have to back a little bit uh, back and look at should we be using ACE inhibitors when we have alternatives such as angiotensin receptor blockers? Uh, I'm not so sure that since I can't necessarily predict who's going to develop this potentially fatal side effect, that I ought to reach for an ACE inhibitor first if I have an ARB as an option. Uh, once ARBs are less costly, once they become generic, then the benefits of ACE inhibitors may be a little bit less clear. Just to make this even more fun, the hypertension trialist group, which is prospectively looked at uh, both ACE inhibitors, ARBs, as well as other drugs, to see whether we could attribute the benefits to blood pressure lowering, showed that for stroke and also for heart failure, this seemed to be directly related to blood pressure when you compared ACEs to ARBs. Not so for myocardial infarction. There did seem to be a modest but statistically significant improvement not attributable to blood pressure when you compared ACEs to ARBs to prevent coronary disease. So this is another instance where clinical trial data doesn't give us what we need. This is a case where we've got to look at other, other sources of information to see if we can, in fact, decide what the best therapy is for our patients. Thank you very much.